years coming up. But we need this first, okay? We need both. We need both. Um, so we're going to start with a similar question. So you guys can introduce yourselves. So your names, um, where you're from, what you do, and what you do in terms of work, and how you came to Christ. I'm Laurie Barron. Um, I have another name, Laurie Scott, depending on whether you're seeing me at the hospital or someplace else. <laughs> I have two identities. Um, I grew up here. I was born in North Florida, but we moved to South Florida when I was four, so this is my home. Any, time, any place where I'm at that gets less than 70 degrees in the wintertime is a foreign place. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. So I'm actually a physician. I practice um, maternal fetal medicine, which is high risk obstetrics. I only take care of pregnant women who have complications of some sort. Um, and I came to Christ very early. Um, I, um, re my memory is that I was about four, and I was standing outside of a church, and a man in a turban came up and started speaking to me about that I want to know Jesus. And in the, conversation with this man who I didn't know, I said yes and I gave my life to the Lord. Well, it turns out that no one else in my family saw this person or no knows way. who he was, has any memory of that event, so I don't know <laughs> exactly what happened, but I think maybe the Lord sent someone specifically to speak to me at that time. And I met the Holy Spirit when I was seven and um, for me it's just he's always been there. He's always been there. When I was in college, I did very intentionally think and say, okay, is this what I really believe? Is this what I want to believe? Is this the way I want to continue to pursue my life? And it was really never a question, but it was an intentional question I asked myself, and the answer, of course, was, was yes. But there was no question but that I had met the Lord much earlier. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Barron. So I'm uh, Lori Barron's husband. Robert Barron, I, um, I'm an attorney by, uh, in, in the work life. I'm a corporate attorney. I don't go to court. I, I buy and sell things. I represent um, clients that buy and sell businesses or office buildings or something like this, or um, things like that. Also, I'm honored to be uh, one of the pastors here at this fellowship. Yeah. And, I, and I say this just out of just to give you in the sense of missionary. I'm super honored that we do not receive, my wife and I do not receive compensation from the church. So, and none of our elders do either. It's it's awesome. Um, Paul, sometimes Paul. Uh, was paid, and sometimes he worked for himself, and sometimes other churches supported him. So, all this is appropriate in the kingdom. But we are honored because I have a job in law, you know. So it's cool. Um, I encountered the Lord. I, I was raised in a Christian home. Um, we, um, I had an encounter with the Lord uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, when I knew He was He was speaking to me. Uh, when I was sitting next to my best friend, it was not a cool thing um, to do anything religious, and I just had to say yes. And then that was a sophomore, and then when I was a senior, actually, y'all, I mean, this, I'm, I'm old, but um, if you've ever heard of Jesus, name is Jesus, what year, like Jesus 23? Yeah. Um, by the way, God went, we're going to go. But um, way back when, when I was in high school, the predecessors of that ministry um, had a festival in Orlando. It was called Jesus 80. That's how old I am. And, and I got ruined in a tent about 11 o'clock in the morning when the Lord descended upon one of the meetings. And I saw the Lord. I got ruined. Um, so, that's my story. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so my name is Steve Champagne. Woo! Champagne. And um, I own a software company. I've been doing that for a little over a dozen years. 
but that's, that pays the bill, but uh, bills, but I also, first priority is my passion. Yeah. But I yes, I get to do that, you know, so that's what I spend all my time doing that. Um, I grew up in a Christian household and went to Christian schools. And in ninth grade, I remember, I don't know what his position was, but he gave, like, went to the Apple and he gave a gospel message. <clears throat> And I knew at that time, I was nine years old, remember? And, I, and, he, and he gave a message so real to me. Is it breaking up? Yeah. One, two, one, two. Okay, yeah. got it. So, um, nine, so I'm nine years old, chapel, he gave the message, and I knew that I knew Jesus was real. I gave my life to the Lord. Unfortunately, by the time I got to high school, probably you know, 15, 16, I went the other direction. And clearly by the time I graduated from high school, I rejected God, I rejected the gospel, and I was living. You just, just trust when I tell you, you wouldn't want him to have known me at that time. And for about 10 years of my life, I was in the world totally backslidden. But uh, my girlfriend at the time, who did not know Jesus, actually led me to the Lord, and she's not my wife. Yeah. That's, that's right. So I had a second visitation. God, God spared me. He, got me. he brought me back for my Unbelieving wife. So there you have Thank you guys so much. That's and, and before we move on, I just want to um, personally, can we just honor our pastors? They're fully supportive of um, this is year three of 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 Dream City Conference, by the way, and we were this past year started doing uh, Sunday night services each month, and um, they've been, we, we wouldn't happen without them. We love you guys. We thank yeah. you guys. Thank you for and letting us do crazy so much things. From you, and we, we're so blessed by you guys. Um, and Steve, I mean, the first priority, uh, I mean, we have teachers in the room um, who are blessed by you as well. And, and our first priority leaders, we just want to honor all of you guys. Yes. And, um, um, that's a mission field. So thank you. Public schools are a mission field. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, before we move on, I actually want to dial in a little bit of that question. So what led you each into your career path specifically? So are you talking about first priority or are you talking about software? Yeah. Uh, I was always a geek, and I think that, uh, and I am still a geek. You know, when you get to know me, you'll see that side of me. And I think I see. I'm old too because I remember when computers first came out. And so in 10th grade, I started like dabbling in programming. But um, believe that, I grew up when computers first came out. So uh, anyway, but when I, in my 20s, a friend of mine who was a software guy, he's the one that got me into it. And he, like, I, I like what I like software, I like, I wanted to do it. He said, grab a book and anything I need to know, he would teach me. And so that's, that's what began. Awesome. Yeah, so, um, Just click it once. Oh, by the way, the, if, if the mic breaks up, don't hold the bottom. That's why it's doing that, by the way. Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. Don't cross the waves. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, uh, I was always outgoing as a, it's a shock to you, but I was talkative as a young kid. Wow. Um, it's funny, my dad My dad said I was going to be a PR, when I was like eight years old, he said, you're going to be a PR man. And of course, my mom did not like that. Like, no, he's going to be a doctor or an Indian chief. You know? But uh, it was, the, I think, the outgoingness of, of, of uh, dealing with people. And uh, what I found with law uh, is... Law answers the questions of how people live. Every area of life has an overlay of laws. And so it, it, it satisfies my curiosity and how the world works. Just like um, 
physicians know how bodies work. I, you know, lawyers know how commerce works. And so that part of me is, it, it, it's, a, it, it's something that's intriguing. What is super awesome that I did not know until I got into law school is that we read the scriptures and we, and we, we read Isaiah and Genesis and Psalms and Matthew and 1 Corinthians and we make them all work together and we understand them. And I got into law school and I said, oh my goodness, I've been doing this for years as a believer. And so law school just came so naturally because I had been training to be a lawyer and not knowing it. Amazing. Come on. Lauren. I found in high school that I just really liked science and particularly biology. Um, I came from a long line of teachers, so my initial thought was I would go and teach biology. And as it just turned out, there wasn't room in my college schedule for biology major and teaching minor or, or education certificate. So as I got more into science, I just kind of felt the Lord calling me or being drawn into the, the healthcare professions. And so um, I did that and just one of the things I can say to any of you all who are kind of wondering what your career trajectory is going to be is this, what you think you're starting in is not necessarily where you'll end up, and that's okay. Because what you'll find is that along the way you'll discover things that you're passionate about that you didn't even know you were passionate about until you got to experience them. And also that the Lord will continue as you come to forks in the road, you're, you'll keep following new forks. And what I am doing today and how I got here, I never could have predicted way back when. As I said, I started thinking I was going to be a biology teacher. I ended up thinking that I was going into family medicine, and then I thought I was going into OBGYN, and then I thought I was going into maternal fetal medicine, and I wasn't interested in research, and then I started doing research, and, and you know, I'm a medical director in the memorial healthcare system. So, it's just been this huge trajectory that I never could have predicted. And you can trust that the Lord will place you where you need to be. Because again, where I geographically thought I was going to end up is not where I ended up. But that was a strategic plan of the Lord. So what I would just counsel you all in is not only is don't worry about with the end at your beginning, because the Lord has that in hand. And don't worry about when you have doors that close that you thought should have been opened. Because if you're trusting in the Lord, you can trust that he is strategically opening and closing doors even when you don't realize that he's doing that on your behalf. Because you can't see the end from the beginning yeah. the way he does. Oh, yeah. 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 Better. Um, I, I, I'm originally from Louisiana, uh, went to law school in Louisiana, practiced in Texas. I came to South Florida for a, a job in a private investment banking firm that did not work out. It was a business failure for me. It was a, and I prayed about it. I prayed about it, I humbled myself and said, Lord, I do not want to go if you don't want to take me. Is this you? And I didn't get a, I didn't get a word from the Lord to go. I did not get a word to not go. Right? Yeah. And so by faith, I came believing that I was submitted to God. And I said, Lord, is this right? I came here, and it did not work out. Wow. It did not work out. And if I had not come here, yeah. we would not be here. Wow. Because we were not married at that time. We would, I mean, Nick and Ben would have not been. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I mean, think about it. I mean, it's like, but it, it, it was through a personal humbling failure career-wise um, that, that that happened. So, y'all, we, you, you're, you have to follow the Lord and, and trust him because the door may not, it, it, what looks like, is the right manner may not be pretty for a while, like like what Anna was saying. Annie was saying is it may not be pretty, but um, or Ben Zuber, but God will lead you and and look look what He's done. It's awesome. And and the thing that I would just add to that really quickly is, and, and 
and it was alluded to a little while ago, is the reason why you think you're doing something may not at all be the reason why you're actually doing something. Come on. And so Robert thought he was coming to South Florida for this business, but that was just really God's tool, if you will, to get him to South Florida because he had no other connections here. I was coming back. I grew up here. I was in Dallas at the time. God got him here through that business that failed. That business wasn't what God wanted him to do, but that was this, the tool he used to get him here. And then everything else has flowed from that. So again, when you have a disappointment, when something, they, I really prayed about this, Lord, I trusted you, I thought this was gonna work out, why isn't this working out? Part of the answer might be, that really wasn't what I intended, but that was what I used to get you where I needed to get you so that you could go to the next place. Amen, thank you, Mari, that's so good. I remember Joseph, <laughs> just saying. Amen. Um, okay, so we really want to ask you guys this question. Um, so you guys are all like very invested in church and a fellowship. So Steve is a youth pastor, and you guys are pastors, lead pastors. Um, how do you balance high demanding careers, having them for so many years, because you all have had it for so long, um, and ministry? Like, how do you balance those both things? One, two. Okay. So uh, my background in business for so many years lend itself that I was able to multitask, right? But I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> Three years ago, I got COVID. And I was dying. It was really bad. I mean, when I tell you it was bad, I told my wife, get the insurance papers, let's make sure everything's straight because I didn't think I was going to make it. And I refused to go to the hospital because at that time they weren't letting people go, go with you to the hospital, your family go with you to the hospital, and I didn't want to die alone. So I was like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die at home. Wow. So that's how bad it was. But I spent like a week in bed. All I could do is go to the bathroom and get back in bed. I couldn't do anything. And I was, and I was, it took about a month or a month and a half to recover. But in that time, I, I spent so much time with God. I can't, I mean, my whole dreams, everything I thought, everything was about God and in heaven, and I just just processed everything through the prism of God's eyes, you know, and I was able to see things, and we had conversations, and he showed me things, and it totally changed my life to the, to the extent that I realized prior to that that all I was doing in my life was doing. Like, that's, I just got up to do, to do, to do. And then once I got knocked on my butt and then spent real time with God, I realized what was important. Yeah. So moving forward, and, and I'm, you know, it's embarrassing to say this, but you know, the last three years, my whole life has changed because in the last three years, nothing matters unless I spend time with God. Yeah. That, that's the beginning and the end. I won't do anything if I can't spend time with God. Amen. And then Amen. from that place, the rest of my day can go. Amen. So that's how I, so if you want to know, that's how I do it because God has my first. So good, Steve. So um, I'm, I'm really blessed in the sense that what I do for a living is um, is my analogy is, it's like I'm cooking five or six things at one time. And so what you, the, the goal is, is to try not to burn anything and try to make them, and try to cook it all, and at the end of the day, cook them. And so what I do throughout the day is, Here we go. Good. What I do, what I do in my work life is, I stir this and then I stir this. So I'm, I'm multitasking all day long and, and, and dealing with other people's problems all day long. 
which sounds a lot like ministry. Um, it's what we, you know, in that sense, so it was, a, it was, in that sense, I was trained, I've been trained to do that. But practically speaking, how we do this here, there's no way we would do this here if not that our elders and their wives, we have a partnership where we divide and conquer. And conquer is not the right word. We divide and serve. We, 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 we all have different um, responsibilities and, and, um, and jobs, but it's, it's kind of like this when, when, it's, when you're a guest and you, and you eat, you, you leave the table and the plate is still on the table. Like you go to a restaurant, whatever. But when you're at home and you eat, I don't know about you guys, but when I grew up, mom said, bring your plate to the kitchen, you know, and put it in the sink. And I was, you're supposed to put the dishwasher, but I, like, I think I there if I get it in the sink. But the point is, is that you're, you pitch in because it's home. Yeah. And we have a relationship among our leadership here that it's all home. And so everybody just does stuff. Um, let me tell you, Dream City, we don't do anything. We just show up. It's it's Anthony and Sarah that do everything. And they're they're helping to coordinate. And then all these people that you see, what's so super awesome, the kingdom, is everybody comes and does their part and everybody is willing to serve. And that's that's we couldn't do it otherwise. We couldn't do it otherwise. And what's so cool is is we see it in Dream City too, and it's the kingdom, y'all. It's how it's supposed to be. It's it's family. Church is not a corporation. It's family. Wow. It's family. He's a father, and it's family. So I second all of that that both Steve and Robert have said. Um, on a personal basis, I'm also I think multitasking is the word of the day um, because. You have to juggle daily life at the same time that you're juggling your career, at the same time that you're trying to meet the needs of the, the ministry. So having a team with you is key for a ministry. But just in terms of like how do I incorporate Jesus into my day? How do I incorporate my faith into my career? Because Truly, they're not separate, right? Your faith informs, and, and I want to get away from, actually from the word faith. I've been meditating on this this weekend. My relationship with Jesus informs my career and my daily relationships. And so I'm actually having a running conversation with Jesus all day long. You know? So, you know, as I'm walking through the hallway, I'm thinking, Lord, how do I take care of this patient? Help me with this thing over here. I'm thinking about my family. I'm thinking about the church. I'm praying about those things. I'm really just, it's, it's not prayer in the classic sense, but it's a running dialogue. I mean, think about it as spiritual text messaging all day long, right? And so I feel like because I'm constantly connected that way, that the Lord has access to me to speak into what I'm doing in a moment and I don't have to be on my knees in intercession trying to hear, right? Because the conversation is ongoing. As a physician, you know, I obviously am taking care of patients who have problems, right? And so they're in a vulnerable place. And so I'm always also looking for opportunities to speak into the lives of my patients, pray with them when appropriate in person, pray with them behind the scenes. And so I try to bring Jesus to the people that I'm taking care of. I try to bring Jesus to the nurses that I'm working with. Um, and I will tell you that the nurses and the patients have recognized the peace that I carry. And they will frequently come back to me and say, when you walked into the room, I just felt so peaceful. Like all the chaos, all the anxiety, all the stress left when you came in the room. And that's not me, but it's the spirit I carry. And I'm not personally aware of it because I just live in it. And 
the same is true for all of y'all, wherever you are doing, whether you're in the healthcare profession or a teacher or software engineer or whatever it is, you carry something with you into wherever it is you go. And if you're constantly asking the Lord, how can I impact people? You don't even have to be evangelizing overtly, but you can just be speaking words of wisdom into people's lives. But the Lord can give you a word of knowledge to, to prompt you to ask a question that then gives you an access point to be able to communicate with that person. Obviously, you can be praying behind the scenes. So just recognize that every place is a mission field. Even if you're not officially a missionary, even if you're not officially evangelizing or not allowed to evangelize as a physician, I have to be very careful because of um, just ethics that I can't be um, doing anything that might be considered to be forcing my belief system on a patient or a person that I work with. But I have a lot of other ways to communicate the Lord right. you know, besides just you know, preaching overtly to them. And all of you all have the same thing. Amen. Yeah. yeah, I'm soaking all this in. <laughs> like, I want, there's five questions in my head that I want to ask. Um, but we're going to close. We're going to close. Can I just say something? Yeah. What yeah. you just said about the, the communicate with God yeah. throughout your day, yeah. that, that is so vitally important. And I didn't learn that until later on in life. But you, you think you have all these thoughts going through your head and you don't realize that God is constantly talking to you. He's constantly giving you a download and you don't even realize it. So you so if, if you're in the place where uh, you're thinking about, uh, should I go to Chipotle, you know? But you turn that into a, hey God, what are you thinking about going to Chipotle? Just start practicing those little things. Then you begin to develop the, the ability to constantly have conversations with God. You know, so that that's like, the best thing you heard so far tonight was what you just said. That was excellent. You, excellent. you know what? That Amen. might sound even a little silly. So you might skip that sometimes. So I'm, you know, past that. But you know what? Maybe the Lord says, no, go to here because there's somebody. Yeah. There's something. Amen. There's something there. Amen. Amen. That's, I, I love it. This is why we're doing this. Honestly, I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Um, you guys have downloaded so much information into, into the room tonight. Um, but I do want to finish with this quick question. If there's something or anything you could tell, say, somebody in the room. This who crowd. Is, this crowd, yeah. Who, it, who what could that could be encouraging in the sense of full-time ministry, career, just like we were talking with Ben and Annie. Sometimes it's one, some, it it's often happens where sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. How do you stay so consistent and faithful to both while loving the Lord and serving in your career. If there's something you could tell us in the room, just one final bit of, in, of, of wisdom. I mean, I, I actually have something, right? Um, okay, I'll just give it to you. I'll go over to you. So, listen. We think that we are, let's say for example, first priority, that I'm going to first priority so that I can preach the gospel or teach kids how to preach the gospel so they can get friends or, or a pastor can say like, you know what, I pastor a church so that I can teach, you know, uh, disciple young people into become followers of Christ. And you know, we can just continue going down that stream. Yeah. But if you recognize that whatever you do, or let's say worship, I'm looking at Jonathan right, right now, right? Jonathan, you know, I play the keyboard so I can usher people into uh, the presence of God. <clears throat> if you realize that actually everything you do yeah. is ministering to Jesus, that, right. Right. So that that literally okay. is what you're doing, That's you're it. ministering yeah. Yeah. To Jesus, yeah. and then everything else just comes next. So I think that's um, very insightful, and I think it's important to understand um, the 
Lord places us in places that we're not really sure why we're there sometimes, when in fact we want to be someplace else. But for those of you all who play chess, you'll understand this better. The Lord is a master chess player. He plays on multiple dimensions. He plays throughout time and space. And you could be the pawn sitting in the corner, and you're sitting here thinking, why isn't the Lord using me? Why isn't he moving me? Why do I just have this, what appears to be this dead end job or whatever? But what you don't know is he's setting up the board so that in the proper moment, you can be the one who is checkmate. Okay? The Lord, the best chess players, and I'm not a chess player, but my kids play, my husband plays, so I watch them. The very best chess players, the grandmasters, truly know the end from the beginning. They can see the moves 10, 15, 20 moves out. And if you ever saw the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, there's a moment, there's a scene, which I think is really relevant to our spiritual life, where the young chess player gets a look on his face. He's midway into the game, and he gets this look, the smile on his face. And his parents talked to his coach and said, why, why is he doing that? Why is he? And the coach who recognizes the pieces on the board says, he sees the pathway to victory and he knows he's gonna win. Now this is many moves before he actually wins, but at that point the board was set in place so that victory was assured no matter what his opponent did. And that is the way the Lord uses us. He places us as chess pieces on a board. We all have a strategic purpose. We're all where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there. And for those of you, what I want to just encourage you is whether it's in your career or other things, many times you feel like you're in the wilderness. You're in the wilderness for a reason. There's a period of time that the Lord has you put there because there's something that you need to learn. There's something that you need to develop. It could be spiritually. Or it could be, I need to learn this skill set because he's going to move me from here to there. And when I get there, I needed to have already learned that over there because otherwise I can't do this thing that he's really calling me to. So as I, you know, kind of getting back to your question, it's a long-winded thing, but I would just say the way I stay focused, even when I don't understand what's going on, even when I'm unhappy with what's going on, whatever, I remember that nothing is wasted and that the Lord has me on the chessboard where he needs me. But one other thing I wanna say also is that I intentionally make a decision to trust him every day. Yeah. Our flesh can bring doubt, especially if you're, Robert will talk about this, if you're hungry, if you're stressed, if you're tired, if, if you know, if whatever life is, we say you're sick, whatever, your things are coming against you in the natural, those are the times when doubt come in because you're tired. You don't have your defenses up to fight the battle. Make a decision every day that no matter what I feel like, no matter what the doubts I have in my life are, I believe Jesus is Lord and I am His. Amen. Thank you. Two, two things. Um, the first one is what we found in our in our um, in our in our business book, Laura and I both, that um, many times our role is to be translators, to translate um, for people, to be a bridge for people that help them to understand or, or understand spiritual things or the kingdom. So, and to do that, sometimes you. You, you use different language. Like, uh, um, I was honored at a point to, to be involved with the Chamber of Commerce and spoke to 500 people in a Chamber of Commerce meeting. You can preach the gospel. You can share um, the truth of the Lord without quoting scripture. You can translate in, into their understanding into, in, in, in using different words um, and, and still communicate the kingdom. And so the, the idea of, of wherever you are, you can be a translator, you can help be a bridge and to get them closer. Remember, you don't have to close the deal. You're just one of the seeds in their life 
I heard some things it takes 26 touches before someone comes to the Lord. You can be number 15, and, and, but, but you're a secret agent in, in there. The second thing is a, is a radical thing. I got this little baby revelation, but it is powerful, y'all. Um, and it's, I have to mention LSU, sorry, because I went to LSU, but a couple of years ago, LSU won the national championship. And um, they, were real, they were behind, but their first touchdown, I noticed this, let me just tell you, it's a football thing. On offense, they threw a pass. And what's really odd is, is that if you count it, five people, five people went out for a pass. So the four receivers went out for a pass, and one of the, the running backs went out for a pass. And, you know, if you didn't know the, the game, you would say, what a waste. It's like, why did, if, you know, because you only have one football, right? Why, why do five people go out for a pass when only one person's going to get it? Why didn't everybody stay behind and just send one person out? Because why waste the energy? And, you know, silly rabbit, y'all know why. Because the four people that don't get the ball, their job is to pull as many defenders to them so that the guy that's going to get the ball can catch it. And the guy that catches the ball dances in the end zone. But he would not have caught the ball if four other guys had not run their route. And got interference. Take me out. Let him catch the ball. This, this, is, this will rock you. What if God has called me to run the route and never catch the ball? Right? Let me tell you, I'll promise you this. You may not dance in the end zone, but you will be honored in heaven. Yeah. And the king will honor you. Listen, what if Dream City is running interference for somebody else? What if there's like a revival happening in Kentucky or Dallas or pick a state or, or Hong Kong? And we're the ones running interference for them. He's the master chess player. He can do anything. Yeah. And so there's this idea of what the important thing is, we're audience of one. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing what he tells you to do. And let him settle accounts. He'll be awesome. Yeah. He'll be awesome. Amen. Amen. Amen.